Hi guys, how's everybody? Welcome to my Tuesday Live. I have so much fun with these and I hope you do too. It's a great opportunity for me to talk about what tutorials I'm doing this week, what materials I use to make the tutorials, give you a chance to ask any questions, dive more on things I may have figured out about the project, little extra information that I don't want to share in the video itself because it's just too much extra, but I get to share it here. And I'm really loving these Tuesday tutorials. I hope you are too. How these Tuesday tutorials are structured. I start by doing some announcements, talk about the tutorials, maybe say anything that I think would be important for you to know. And then at the very end of these Tuesday lives, I have a Q&A session open availability. So if you have any questions, any anything that you're running into an issue with or just want to ask me about a particular yarn or material or just ask me anything, we have a whole Q&A session at the end of the tutorial. I'd like to introduce Hannah, my moderator. If she comments on your comment or says anything in regards to whatever you may have asked or said here in the chat, just know that she is my moderator and she is sending all questions directly to me. That way I don't have to read through the chat at the end and go through that whole process of you just watching me read. I'm right there and I can or she just gives it right to me so I can answer the questions directly right when we get to the Q&A session part. Oh, welcome, Samantha. I'm so excited for you to be here. Monique. Oh, LaRue. Oh, look at all of you. I'm so happy for you to be here. So excited. Okay, so first off, I want to mention, if you haven't seen it already, I have mystery box giveaway number 11 live right now. So if you didn't know that after this live, pop on over there and enter into mystery box giveaway number 11. Oh my gosh. Next month is a whole year or a 12th. It'll be a, almost a year. It'll be my 12th month. And I'm like, wow, I've been doing this for a while. <laughs> so yes, mystery box number 11 is live right now. It started today. So if you didn't know about it, it's okay. It just started today. The live or the mystery box giveaway entry goes all the way through Saturday. I cut it off at Saturday, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, my time, because that's when I announced the winner. So after that, there's no point in really entering because I've already announced the winner. <laughs> so yeah, if, after this, pop on over there and enter into mystery box giveaway number 11. Welcome everybody. I'm so excited for you to be here. Thank you for joining me, having some fun, just chilling, chatting, talking about projects and all things happening over here with upcoming tutorials. <laughs> all right. Another thing, another announcement, warm up America. Tomorrow is the last day for you to ship anything to warm up America. If you would like it to count towards our campaign. Okay, so they did extend it. Originally, the cutoff date was February 21st. And then uh, it was brought to my attention after the fact that February 21st was President's Day, a holiday. Post offices aren't open that day. And I was like, oh, man, <laughs> how did this slip my mind? So I reached out to Warm Up America. They're like, oh, my gosh, how'd that slip our minds? So they pushed it off till Wednesday, the 23rd, which is tomorrow. So if you still need to get your Warm Up America donations in, try to get it in tomorrow. Have it postage stamped on there with tomorrow's date. That way it counts towards our campaign. Now, if that just can't happen, don't stress about it. Don't worry. Warm Up America is always accepting donations always. So even if you get your shipment in late, they're still going to love and appreciate anything that you can donate to them. It's going to be used. It's going to be appreciated and loved. And so don't worry about it meeting my campaign numbers. It's all for the, the good, the cause, right? So it's all for just spreading good into the world. So I wanted to make that announcement for you, just in case you didn't know. Uh, uh, and last but not least, my boho basket kit. I am down to just a few left. So if you still wanted to nab a boho basket kit, get on my website right now, crochetwithtiffany.com, and grab that kit up because they're almost gone. And right now, I... I I bought a lot of material. The store hasn't fully restocked yet. So I don't have the ability to go and buy more material to restock. <laughs> so 
right now it's once they're gone, they're gone until potentially something in the future, I can restock anything or somebody asks me specifically for a box. Okay. Again, uh, how this live is structured. I'm going to start with announcements. Then I'm going to go into the tutorials. If you'd like to ask me any questions prepping in the beginning part of the chat, feel free to ask me any questions. That way, when it comes to the Q and A session at the end of the tutorial, at the end of this video, that all questions are ready to go and I can answer them. Again, I'm introducing Hannah. Hannah is my moderator for this live, and so if she comments on your chat or answers a question. That's who Hannah is. She's my moderator. She's also fielding all questions and she's sending them directly to my phone right now. So when I get to the question part, I can just go through my phone and quickly find the questions opposed to reading, 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 scanning, scanning, scanning through the chat. Cool. All right. So great. I got through my three announcements. I'm ready to go into my tutorials, which I'm super excited. So the first tutorial there's two tutorials that I want to release this week, having a little technical difficulty. So it's basically going to be the next two tutorials I release on my channel, whether or not they can make it this week. I hope, fingers crossed, they can make it this week, having a little technical difficulty, but they're my next two tutorials. So first tutorial is, or that I'm going to talk about, is the Amigurumi Owl Stuffed Animal. I love this stuffed animal stuffed animal so much it i was i was researching it and i found that i've been making this stuffed animal for nine years i've been referring back to this pattern for nine years and that blew my mind i was like wow i have that's crazy so yeah i'm going to be showing you how to make this little guy he's absolutely adorable you can manipulate the color combinations however you want to let me tell you what i use though to make him so when I make stuffed animals, which is one of my favorite things to make with crochet is stuffed animals, I really like to use Karen Simply Soft yarn because, let me give you a reason, one, the material is shiny and it's clean. The stitches are sharp, easy to see, it's highly defined. I just really like how the stitches turn out. So I like to use Karen Simply Soft. If you want an alternative to Karen Simply Soft, uh, there is Premier Eversoft, and there's also um, Yarn Bee Soft Secret. They're all kind of the same, very similar type yarn. So that's what I prefer to use, but if you want to use whatever you want to use, it's a size four weight, worsted, medium, Aaron, a 10, 12 ply or an eight WPI sized yarn. Okay. The exact yarn I used. I used Karen Simply Soft in the color Bone for his wings, his head, his ears. I used, for the pink color, I used Karen Simply Soft in the color Victorian Pink. If you want to make the blue one, that's Karen Simply Soft in the color Light Country Blue. Then we have the beak and the feet, the little feet. Karen Simply Soft, the color pumpkin or an orange color. Karen Simply Soft in the color white for his inner eye. And then I use personal preference was a black yarn. This is Karen Simply Soft just because I stuck with the theme. I make a lot of stuffed animals, so I ha have a lot of different colors that I can just grab from my mini bins down here that are full of just leftover skeins. Cause honestly, this is all I'm using of the orange. So it's necessary for it to pop for the color to pop, but you're not using the whole skein to make the stuffed animal, if you know what I mean. So I use black to attach the black button eyes. So it camouflages in and it doesn't stick out or look obvious on the stuffed animal. Like you don't have a white yarn attaching the black button and you just all of a sudden see you see the white yarn it's a it's a little trick that i use so those are the, the colors that i use to make the stuffed animal uh, anything else i want to mention with the colors i mean really you can use whatever color you want that's just what i use to make these guys the crochet hook i used so in the pattern 
Do I want to give you? I'll give you the pattern. The pattern's not mine. It's a Lion Brand pattern. So it's it's free. Go to the website, lionbrand.com. And it is called the Amigurumi Graduation Owl. Now, I don't make the graduation cap. I just make the owl because I thought the owl was super cute. So get don't let the pattern confuse you when it says graduation owl. We're not making this. We're just making him. Okay. Super cute. So yeah lionbrand.com and then search in their little search bar for the amigurumi graduation owl free pattern you can print that off you ready to go in the pattern they call for a crochet hook size g6 or a 4.00 4.25 millimeter crochet hook now for me personally i think that crochet hook is too big I like my crochet stitches on my stuffed animal stuffed animals to be nice and tight. So you can't see the polyfill on the inside. All you see is the stuffed animal. So I prefer to use a size F5 or 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. However, if that crochet hook is too thin for you, it's too small, then you can, you can technically use the six, the G6. That's fine. I just personal preference. I like to use the F5. Five. Sometimes it'll even go down to an E. But so there's the crochet hook. You're going to need a yarn needle to weave in your ends and attach all the pieces together. Um, pair of scissors, obviously. Oh, did I grab them? Where? Oh, they're over here. Now the owl is most all of the parts of the owl are worked in continuous rounds, working in rounds here. So if you like to use stitch markers to help guide you when working in rounds, I recommend you grab those. I do use a trick where I use the tail of my yarn as my round marker and it just camouflages in and I don't have to move any markers physically. So I'm using that technique in the video, but if you don't like that technique, fine um stitch marker uh, polyfill obviously because it's a stuffy technically you could stuff the stuffed animal with anything you want if you had extra yarn scraps i've heard people use extra yarn scraps uh there's uh, a stuffing called stuffed animal stuffing that you could use if you wanted to just anything that's gonna just help give your stuffed animal some structure I really like this polyfill right here, and it's really well priced, $2.99 for this giant bag. And two button eyes. One, two. So the button eyes in the pattern are smaller than the button eyes that I use, obviously. Use what you want. Uh, let this be what, like your owl. If you want bigger eyes, use bigger eyes. If you want smaller eyes, use smaller eyes. It's personal preference. Really it is. The size button eyes that they use in the pattern is a nine millimeter button. The size I used was a, I want I think it's a 12. I measured it out. I think it's a 12 millimeter button. I'm going to, in the video that I release, I'm going to include links to where I bought my buttons and other links that you could use for various sizes of buttons. So if you struggle to find the right stuffed animal button eye, it's just at least a guide to show you where I got mine. So if you wanna use what I use, you can just click on that link and purchase it and have it shipped directly to you. So I think, is that everything for the owl? I think that's everything for the owl. He is super cute though, I'm very excited about him. So he is one, just a little background information, I used to do a lot of, uh, I sold at events. I did craft fairs. I did Christmas bazaars. I did farmer's markets and stuffed animals always sold great. So like I mentioned many times, I'm trying to do more stuffed animals this year to help you out. Kids also love these. Whenever they walk into my art or my craft room, my stuffies are the first thing to disappear. So stuffed animal, really fun. Okay, so let's move on. Next thing I wanna talk about is I, I'm super excited about it. 
that guy right there. This tutorial is going out after the owl. It's the, I'm calling it the perfect jumbo floor poof. Why am I calling it the perfect jumbo floor poof? Because it's one that an adult can use. <laughs> I've looked for a lot of different patterns and generally uh, a lot of the patterns I found, they're more like an ottoman shape than a floor poof, at least in my opinion, just kind of smaller and more round. But I always feel when I sit on those, like I'm going to fall off. And I was like, I need something that I can sit on, something that's comfortable for me, <laughs> you know, and also not just sit on it, but if I want to use it as a pillow or just like prop up against a wall and lean against it. And this does all those things. It's great. Let me show you. Can you see me? <laughs> so it's like really comfy. And it feels great as a pillow. And it's just awesome. I'm loving it so much. Uh, it's it's funny though. I made I was working on the tutorial for it today, and I don't know what happened. I made I made a rookie mistake with making the tutorial, and I was so embarrassed. I uh, made the entire tutorial using the wrong crochet hook. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I was so embarrassed. I reached the end of the tutorial and realized, why is it so big? <laughs> like, why is it bigger than it should be? And uh, I was like, oh no. <laughs> so I'm going to have to remake that tutorial so that way I have the correct size crochet hook in the video, which is a huge bummer. It's a bit of a setback, but I'm like, I'd rather do it right for you than just get a video out, if that makes any sense. So. That was one thing, but I'm so in love with it. I'm so excited. The color, the texture, let me even like get it closer for you. The stitches are simple, but it looks beautiful. I'm really into this earthy, relaxed, calm, zen, just chill vibe right now. It's something that's super important to me. And even like just mental health and brain, just having something neutral that makes me feel calm and zen out. It's huge. And I love this. And the size of it is, it's really impressive. It's like, whoa, that is a floor poof. <laughs> it's almost like a bean bag without being a bean bag, you know? So it's thin, but... But yeah, I can't wait to take those downstairs and use them in my own living room. <laughs> that's going to be, that's going to be awesome. And how, uh, okay. So materials for making him. I wanted to use a jumbo yarn for a couple different reasons. Um, one reason it works up fast opposed to a smaller yarn. A uh, second reason is that it's squishy. So it has more more comfort involved in the project. It's not just a, a wrap around the pillow. It's more of a extra cushion. So I really liked that. And this color was great. When I saw this color, I thought it was perfect. Uh, so this is the Loops and Threads Chunky Grande. And it was, it, it did the yarn test, you know, the, the yarn squeeze where you just get your fingers in there and you're like, yep, that's it. That's it. <laughs> So this is in the color neutral. Let me see if I can. It is a size seven jumbo yarn. I used 10 of these to make that floor poof. 10 of them. Because even though this is a giant skein, it goes fast. It does. So I used, let me see if I have the info right here. Okay, so I used... Next page. About 320 yards of the size seven jumbo yarn or 290 meters, 105 ounces or 3000 grams. Now, when I say 3000 grams, the reason why it's that high is because 
just weighs a lot because, or not a lot, it just has more weight because it's thick jumbo yarn. So, and I'm going to put all of this, I'll put all this information in the description section of this video after I've gone live. So that way you can have that, or you can just wait for Friday's tutorial as well. I'll have all the information there for you too. Um, what else is involved in the floor poof? Oh, the crochet hook size that actually did work is a 20 millimeter. So I started making the the floor poof with the 25 millimeter because honestly, that was the recommended crochet hook size on the yarn label. It was a 25 millimeter crochet hook. So I'm like, okay. But it ended up being way too big for the cushion. So I went down to a 20. There we go. <laughs> a 20 millimeter crochet hook and it was perfect. Perfect. So I'll put links to this in the video itself if you need to get your hands on the bigger bigger crochet hooks. I know some of uh, some of us, you have to order them in order to get your hands on them. So I want to make sure that you don't have to do a lot of work and research. I did that all for you. I'll provide a wood version and I think they have a plastic version of this as well. I do not think they make aluminum versions of crochet hooks this size. I think that would be really heavy. I haven't seen it. So I'll, sh I'll provide what I find. What else is there? Oh, it's all, where are you? There you are. Okay. So I do weave in some ends with the jumbo poof. So I have a jumbo yarn needle with that huge eye right there. So it's really optional. If you want to, you can use the crochet hook to kind of weave an end, stick it inside the pillow. So that way you don't have to weave in an end. You just stick it inside the project. But I liked it to be more cleaned up, more professional looking. So I weaved in my two ends that size. And, oh. You need to know the size of the cushion. Size of the cushion. It's a 32 inch circle circular pillow. So this is what I used. Again, I'll have links to everything. I think I got mine off of michaels.com. That's where I got mine. I got mine online. I don't know if they have them in the store, but I, I bought mine online. Was there anything else? Just scissors. That's the only other thing always have scissors. <laughs> oh my gosh. I want to show you this. So I decided that I wanted to get myself a pair of fancy scissors because you just see them all over Pinterest and all over these fancy like books and everything. And I was like, I want a pair of fancy scissors. So I got myself a pair of fancy scissors. <laughs> have I used them yet? No, haven't used them yet, but they're pretty. And they make for good photo props. <laughs> All right. So there it is. The two tutorials I have upcoming on my channel. Be ready for them. If you are not subscribed to my channel, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. That way you get notified as soon as the video goes live. If you haven't checked the notification bell, the little, you know, where you check subscribe and then there's a bell right next to it. If you click the bell, Make sure you click all that way. All of my tutorials reach you and not just a select few here and there. I'm still having some people mention that they're struggling to, or they just don't get my videos. And I'm like, Tr try that, try the notifications. But yeah, these are my two tutorials coming up guys. They're, re they're recorded. They're, they just need to be edited and put together. So owl and floor poof. And of course, let me know if you have any questions. Hannah is fielding questions right now for me. Hannah, you're amazing. Everybody say, Hannah, you're amazing. Because without her, I'd be having to read through everybody's everybody's questions and having to. Uh, it, it's, it's a lot. So she does a lot for me. And I appreciate her so much. So thank you so much, Hannah. <laughs> okay. I am done talking about all the amazing things that I came here to talk about. So now we are open to the Q&A session of this live. I love this. I really love this opportunity, knowing that every Tuesday I'm going to be here for you. So if you do have a question pop up, you just can rely on the fact that, oh, it's Tuesday. Tiffany will be here. On rare occasion, I might not be able to make it to a live. 
be at a family event, you know, things happen, things come up. But for the most part, I'm going to try to be here for you consistently. So you always know if you have a question, you can reach out to me. All right. I'm going to check my messages here that Hannah has fielded to me. Okay. Carol wants to know what your favorite brand of yarn winder is. I don't really have a favorite brand of a winder. I like the ones I have. I think, I think it's downstairs right now because I was, I was making cakes for the kids. So I have my winder downstairs. Oh, Hannah was making cakes for the kids. Thank you, Hannah. <laughs> uh, and it's just a plastic, white plastic yarn winder that takes the skein and makes it into a cake. That I like that one. It works well for me. I've seen those beautiful wood ones that expand out. And those things are cool. And I think those are great if you have like a hank yarn. And for those of you who don't know what a hank yarn is, this is a hank hank yarn. So if you have a hank yarn, those expanders are great for those. Right now I'm just using the back of a chair, which doesn't work great, but it works. It does the job. Um, if, if you care, those of you newbies on, on the channel, this is a cake. Cake. Skein or skein, tomato, tomato. And do I have a, I have a donut. I have a donut. This is a donut. It's what they call a donut. So impromptu little, little thing right there. Okay. So yeah, no, no particular favorite brand. Just like to cake them. Um, Keith Lewis, I understand how to do a decreased crochet in the room. What does a pattern mean when it says Ford decreases in the round? Probably four decreases in the round. Ah, uh, if the pattern says four decreases in the round, they didn't tell you when to decrease, I'm assuming. So what you're, you're going to have to have best judgment there. I would take the number of stitches that are in that round, divide it by four, and then every, that number, make sure there's a decrease in that section, you know? So if there's, let's say 20 stitches in that round, divide 20 by four, make sure every five stitches you have a decrease in there somewhere. Okay. So, so you have four decreases. Interesting pattern you're working with there, but if I hope that helps. Okay. Uh, Brenda, Brenda Price. Hi, Brenda. Okay. So I prefer to make animal eyes with yarn because I don't want any babies or children chewing on the eyes and swallowing them. Do you have a way to make eyes with yarn? I usually just make X's for them. So I have run into this myself. And the couple tricks that I do if I want to sew um, or <clears throat> I guess it'd be called like embroider yarn uh, eyes on or sew the eyes on opposed to put button eyes on. I do sleepy eye. So it's just like a U. And then I'll add like a couple little eyelashes on the bottom. So it's like sleeping or another trick that I have found is if you can make, it depends on the size of the stuffed animal. If the stuffed animal is big enough where you can make two circles, kind of like this guy, the white part, if you can make two circles and then you can have like a black V it looks like that. <laughs> you can do that. Or another thing I've done is made a bunch of black lines covering th like three rows. So a bunch of black lines. And then I'll take a white and I'll just do like the little inside portion of the eye. So I, I've played with a couple different ways. Uh, you can probably Pinterest 
ideas if you'd like. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. Um, some people will even take felt material and cut the felt and sew the felt onto the stuffed animal for the eyes. I've seen that done too. Um, yeah. So yeah, those are some options if you don't want to use buttons. I'm just trying to think right now. I think that's, you know, that's pretty much your only options that I can think of off the top of my head. That'd be interesting. I wonder if it's been done already where somebody just like shows five different options. Hi, Jody. <laughs> five different I um, ways to sew or not so, but um, make eyes on a stuffed animal, a crocheted stuffed animal, you know, like five different looks of eyes. That would be kind of fun. I'm going to write that down. I don't know when I would get to it, but I think that'd be really, really informative. So like five different ways to sew eyes onto a stuffed animal animal for five techniques five different eye shapes there we go different eye shapes because i do know a lot of people get concerned about using buttons i understand um and emily emily do you re-roll your skeins of yarn before starting a project? It looks a figure eight when you show your supplies, but when you show your working skein, it's all rolled up. It depends on the skein. And actually, I'm kind of cheating right now because that's the that's the question of the week for my crafters gathering right now. <laughs> that was the question I asked everybody in the crafters gathering. I was like, so do you roll your yarn before you use it? And uh, so I'm kind of giving away my answer right now, but it depends on the yarn because some yarns are just filled with knots and it's so frustrating when you're working a project and then all of a sudden you come upon this giant knot in the yarn and it takes you 20 minutes to untangle this knot and you just want to, you just want to be peacefully working on your project, right? So depending on the skein, I will cake it. Or, or just roll it into a ball. And, but there are some skeins that I feel comfortable just working straight from the skein. So uh, this one, uh, Karen Simply Soft, I like to work straight from the skein until it's got, gotten kind of hollow. And then I will just clean it up and cake it. I like to... I think it just comes with experience too. There's so much yarn. I'd go through my whole entire, like all of my yarn to, to discuss like which ones I would cake and which ones I wouldn't. And I think when it comes down to it, it's knowing the yarn, working with it a couple times and realizing, oh, I've had experience where this yarn just knots up a lot. 100% cotton's not up a lot. Uh, not if you center pull. I like to center pull. I do. Uh, I usually, but when I work with Lily Sugar and Cream, I outside pull just because it's so small. I just outside pull. Um, but yeah, generally 100% cotton's not up really easy. Um, oh, it's so hard. Uh, and anything with friction, anything that might have a little extra uh, texture. It's smarter to roll it before you use it because that's going to tangle up too. So it really depends on the yarn but and, and experience. I've worked with a lot of yarns and I know which ones that I need to roll before I use it and which ones I'm okay to just use it from the skein. Okay. Um, great question though. I hope that, hope that helps. <laughs> uh, Life in Janie's Crochet World. Do you have any favorite books of different crochet stitches? Oh, Oh boy. I, I consider myself a bit of a crochet book hoarder. <laughs> I just, uh, I have, I have a lot and I have a lot because 
every book seems to have a different inspiration in it. But my favorite book, let me see if I can grab it. When it comes to stitches, these are my two favorite go-tos. So this one, I even have some sticky notes, like <laughs> flagging certain areas. I like this one a lot, but I love this one. This is an oldie but goodie. I found this at a used bookstore, secondhand bookstore. And I have a lot of inspiration off this beauty. <laughs> I think, honestly, I love, love, love uh, older, older books because the crochet stitches are still beautiful. It's just our taste in color has changed. So if I take the project, the stitches are still beautifully done. Maybe I combined different stitches, combine different stitches together to flatter each other and make a cool design. But just by changing and updating the color of an old project can bring it back to life and make it completely anew. And that, that just makes me so excited. It makes me so excited. So I get a lot of inspiration from this guy. Check out used bookstores, man. There, you can find some gold gems in there. Um, next question, Brenda. Uh, Brenda again, you asked, you asked a second question. I have trouble using a big hook to make my chain and get it started. Any suggestions to help me get started easier with an extra large crochet hook? So making your chains and just getting started in general. Hmm. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna field this one out to, to everybody here in the chat. If you have any suggestions, what you might do. So the question, the question being starting your, or Brenda's having a question about starting a foundation row chain and even just starting a project using a larger hook, it's just a little challenging. Do you have any suggestions for Brenda? Um, Hmm. Can't really think of any. Usually it's the opposite. It's usually people saying that the they're struggling with the crochet hook being too thin. And then I just recommend going bigger. That way it's easier to see everything. But yours is that it's, it's too big and it's harder to use. So depending on the size of the crochet hook, you could even just finger crochet if that would help you just to get, get through it, just kind of, cause all crochet is, is loops, pulling yarn through loops. So if you could, depending on how large the crochet, the yarn is and the crochet hook, you could just use your fingers, but I'm not exactly sure if you, if you struggle with the really, really big yarn and the fingers method doesn't work, it might just be one of those projects that maybe try making it with a, smaller, thinner yarn. That way you can use a smaller, thinner crochet hook. It, but if you love the pattern, if you love the project, just shrink everything and then just adjust sizes, the stitch count to meet dimension. But I don't, uh, but hopefully somebody in the chat, if you, if you have a suggestion for Brenda, please mention it. Love to just help her out. Okay. Is there a good way to judge your tension when getting started, especially for larger hooks? Okay. When I, whenever I use a larger hook, it's because I want really loose tension or I'm working with a really big yarn and I need the tension to be loose anyway. So of course you don't want it to be like hu huge loops, right? There's definitely knowing I shouldn't say that, but um, just using your best judgment and maybe, uh, and maybe know that if 
you try it one, your, your first go is not your, your best work or not your favorite, uh, you can try again and try again and try again. And the best thing for any tension issues is practice. And I, I know that sucks to hear because it's like, come on, isn't there like a, a quicker method, something faster that can help me with my tension? And unfortunately, no, uh, it's it's really just practice and feeling it out and and just feeling the yarn and almost like having this whole relationship with the yarn as you're using it and understanding, oh, yeah, I don't want my stitches too tight here. I don't want them loose. I want a flow a flow and eventually you just kind of get this rhythm going and it's it's just something that comes with practice and that's i know it's a bummer to hear but it's so true it's so true so um my best recommend my, rep, my best recommendation would be to be kind to yourself be kind to yourself be patient and understand that it'll come I promise, I promise it will come. It will. Just be kind to yourself and know it. It will, it'll come with time. Um, Melody. Where's your question? Oh, it's right there. <laughs> is there a pattern for your hat? Yes. Oh, this is my favorite hat. I made it forever ago. It's the page beanie. It's on my web. It's on my channel. Uh, it's one of my first tutorials. I've thought about remaking the tutorial just because as I have grown and grown with YouTube and really um, gotten better with my teaching style and understanding uh, how people are learning and everything, I think I might want to update the tutorial just to do a better job, be more in in flow with how I'm teaching now opposed to how I was teaching when I first started on YouTube. This was one of my first tutorials because it's my pattern. It's my design. And um, I've, I just love this pattern so much. I couldn't wait to get it on the website or get it up on YouTube so people could know how to make it too. So yeah, it's the page beanie. Um, and Vinitza. Vinit, uh, Tiffany, could you do a video on how to read the crochet book. Oh, yes, I actually did. Check out, I have a, a, a tutorial on my channel on how to read crochet patterns. And it's just for the basic stitches. And it shows you, I think, I think a chain, definitely a single crochet, half double crochet and double crochet stitch, how it looks on a pattern, and even how it looks in a chart, and how to read a diagram basically. So I show you how the pattern will look in a couple different ways. And a lot of times people have found that they prefer to, or after they learn how to do it, they prefer to read a pattern off of a diagram, off of a chart, than they do like row one, this is what you do, row two, this is what you do. So I, it's amazing, uh, just personal preference, feeling it out, what works best for you. So I do have a video on that though. It's, it's pink, with flowers <laughs> and it says, uh, I think it says how to read a pattern on it. But yes, all right, that's all the questions I have right now. Uh, if you have a question that I have not answered, feel free to leave it in the or the comment section below the video. I, I, I prefer written patterns before tutorial. Totally, totally get it. Sometimes I use a size larger hook for my foundation chain and then switch to whatever the pattern calls for. Yes, that's that's great if your foundation row ends up being uh, smaller or tighter than the rest of your work. That's a great trick. Now, the best thing about crochet is that it comes out quickly. You can try it. Yeah, yeah. it comes out quickly. Yeah, you can try it again. Absolutely. Oh, sounds like a lot of people have the same kind of message that I do. So yeah. Okay, cool. I don't think I have any other questions. I love being here for you guys, though. I love that we have this ability to talk to chat. Uh, if you do see this live after I've already closed it down, lives over, feel free to keep asking questions in the comment section below this video. If I don't see it, 
if somebody asks a question, I don't see it and you see it and you know the answer, feel free to answer that question for them. I love that this is a crochet community. It's not, uh, I have the answers to everything. You have to ask me and me alone. No, th there's so many amazing, talented, knowledgeable crocheters in this amazing YouTube community. And I love that we just feel good about helping each other out. It's a community. It's all of us. So if you see a question, you know the answer, feel free to answer it. And then when I get a second, I will look back into the look back through and I will either say, yep, that's exactly how I would have answered it. Or that's a great idea. Here's another way that I could think of to answer that question. So you guys are beautiful. You're amazing. Thanks for joining me tonight. Uh, I hope that you enjoy these tutorials that I have coming out. I'm very excited about them and really have, have a beautiful night, guys. I We'll see you very soon with a tutorial. If you're part of my crafters gathering, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Have a great night, guys. Mwah. Love you so much. Bye. <laughs>